he'd call us all together as a team about once a year and he'd say, now man, you're either getting better or you're getting worse. You can't stay the same. Now Dan said a lot of things I'm still trying to figure out. But I understand that. Change is inevitable, it's gonna happen. There's new things coming down the road and you have to be, you have to be available to change. Today we're gonna to talk about six keys to success that allow you to control change, that allow you to excel through change. Change is inevitable. It's going to happen. The question is, how do you do that? How can you be decisive? How can you have that courage? Well, it's preparation. You go to Greeley, and there's 110 guys invited to Greeley. At the end of five weeks, 50 are on the team. More than half get sent home, and every single one of them is gifted enough to play in the NFL. They all are. They've got scouts whose only job it is to go out and go to college and find guys who can play football. And what they do is they'll come into this, to the college and they'll, they'll talk to the coaches and say, hey, you got anybody you think would be a good match for us? They look at film. They do interviews. They run you through those tests. How high can you jump? How much weight can you lift? How fast can you run? All that stuff. And then if they think uh, maybe you can help the team, then they'll, then they'll talk to you. I was the 310th pick of the draft. The Broncos sent two different scouts to scout me. One of them even interviewed my girlfriend. That's how hard they look at you. They know you can help the team. The question is, do you know? And what's your level of desire, passion, mission? I wasn't athletically as good as many of the players that came and went during my career. But I knew where I was going. Uh, he was widely considered the most versatile player in the NFL and he played all seven defensive front positions, often in the course of a single game. Can you tell I loved my job? In 1987, Carl was selected as both the AFC Linebacker of the Year and the AFC Player of the Year. Since retiring, uh, this former Broncos captain has been enshrined in the Denver Broncos Ring of Fame and the Colorado Sports Hall of Fame. Now, I'm, uh, I'm 56 years old now. I'm, I'm not Peyton Manning. I can't play anymore. So I have other desires, passions, missions in my life. You heard as a speaker and an author, I want to inspire long-term positive change. This particular osprey, this crunchy osprey that was spread on the ground before me had been collected in 1910. I saw that lady standing there. She, she had her head in her hands. She couldn't believe what I'd just done. I got hate mail from the Audubon Society. <laughs> my, family, my family lived in Washington, D.C. My mom read about it in USA Today. That was an interesting phone call home from mom. That's the courage to try new things, even though they might go terribly wrong. Because sometimes they do. That's why it's hard to try new things. They film every practice, and now they even film meetings. So theoretically, you can sit in a meeting watching film of yourself, watching film of yourself practicing. Now, I've seen that play over and over again. I know he's right, but my natural tendency as a human being is to think that's not my fault, coach. But what should I think? Yeah, that's my guy. That's my guy, and I'll get him next time. We're going to talk about teamwork with leadership being the ultimate expression of teamwork. Courage, the courage to try new things and the courage to be decisive. Dedication, which is hard work, constant learning, refusing to quit, desire, that's the dream, the passion, the mission. Honesty and forgiveness with yourself and self-evaluation and with others. And finally, goal setting, the little steps that get you to that dream, that passion, that mission. A team is like a teeter-totter or a seesaw. On one side, you've got the leaders. They think long-term. They think we instead of me. They put that team passion, that team mission first. On the other side, you've got the egos. They think short-term. Where's my money? How little can I do today and still keep this job? You know that person. The rest of the team's in the middle, and this is the largest group. They can kind of go either way. That's how it happens in the NFL. That's how it happens in my family. That's how it happens in businesses. That's how it happens in communities. That's how it happens in governments. That's how one person can make a huge difference in a large team concept. 